Hi. I thought I would do is I show you one of the speaker boxes I built. Uh, this speaker is for a base. Uh, it's got two 8 inches in it. I was tired of lugging around 410 speakers and 15 inch speakers and two 15s. And I wanted something light that would work. Now, it's not a very big box. Uh, I was going to weigh it. And what I have is my base next to it. This is a five string base, so I need something that will go pretty low. And uh, what I did is I built this one using a teal small constants for loudspeakers. I went over to, to uh, one of the speaker places. I bought some Pureless speakers. And uh, they're actually subwoofers, but it's interesting is that when I looked at the specs, they actually go up to about 3,000, 4,000 hertz. So they're listed as a subwoofer and uh, are doing quite good. Now, one of the things with... Uh, a speaker, especially for bass guitar, is you want to have a lot of cone movement, and they measure that as they call it MMS. It's part of the teal uh, small uh, parameters, and that says how far can the cone move. And what you want is the cone that can move a lot. Uh, a lot of the woofers are, are for low bass. They'll only move about three millimeters, or or maybe uh, four millimeters. That's not enough for a bass. What you want is somewhere around six and a half to eight. And then, so this one is a, a nice compact speaker. I used a program called Win S, Win ISD to design it. The cabinet lets you to uh, uh, tune it, the cabinet to the speaker parameters. I've got uh, two ports on here. Let's see if you can see the ports. You can just barely see them here. Here's one, here's the other one. They're about uh, 10 inches long, eight, eight, nine inches long here. The cabinet is, this is about, uh, just over 12 inches long. I think it's 22 inches deep and then no 22 inches high and about uh, 18 inches deep or so and that uh, it's quite heavy it's all made with a nice three-quarter inch wood. I've got my router routed the corners all the way down here pick these up at places like a next-gen uh, guitars which sells all sorts of cabinetry for this. This is Tolex. Uh, one of the things I did with the Tolex is I, uh, I, I glue it down and staple it. The front is just a, a perforated grate metal uh, cleaned up and then I painted it uh, with clear on it. Um, mounted it up with uh, some mounting screws here. It's bent in the corners and that. Very easy to do. Uh, the bit, main thing is to get your low resonance uh, on a E string on your base here. The frequency is about 40 hertz. So I had designed this when I had a uh, fretless jazz bass and I only had it was four string. Uh, now I have a five string. The five string I have to go lower. So I've got another cabinet design with the same speaker I'm going to work on that'll bring it down to about 30 hertz resonance. And that uh, the speakers are quite heavy. They're 125 watts RMS each. So this is a 250 watt RMS cabinet. It'll push it quite well. This is the uh, Peerless uh, Tiffany speaker that I used. It's a uh, 8 inch paper cone. I got it from Bart's Express. Um, on sale right now for 52 bucks. I'm not affiliated with them. I paid the full price when I got these. Um, if we scroll down what we can see is the uh, the specs here. Product specs. 8 inch uh, 110 watts RMS. 220 watts peak. 8 ohms. Uh, the frequency response this is supposed to be a subwoofer but the frequency response is 36.5 hertz to 2000 hertz. Uh, which is quite amazing because the subwoofer isn't supposed to go up that high frequency. We'll actually see it goes higher than that when we look at the frequency response curve. Um, the uh, dB SPL is 87.2, um, which is okay. You know, the resonant frequency here says it's 42 hertz, which really uh, conflicts with the uh, specs there. But these are the teal small parameters and these are the specs that you use to calculate your speaker box and we'll take a look at that later. Uh, material con construction, mounting information, it says the baffle cutout is almost 7 inches, 6.97 inches. That's if you were to mount it uh, behind rear loading is what they call it. Uh, we're going to be doing front loading. And, uh, and they give you some specs if you want to make the optimum cabinet size. Uh, these are the actual spec sheet from Tiffany itself and uh, we'll just scroll down here and what we'll see is that the actual resonant frequency from the manufacturer stated is 36.5 Hertz um, 
One of the things that we really are interested in, especially with um, a bass speaker, is we want what's called the linear excursion, uh, 8.5. It's also called uh, uh, X, XMM, maximum linear excursion, uh, 8.5 millimeters, right? That's really important. That'll stop a bass flubbing. Like if you ever played a, a bass cabinet and then you hit it, your bass strings really hard and all of a sudden the speakers start flubbing, you know? like they're overdriving what happens is the speaker actually going beyond the limit and uh, most speakers are th three to four millimeters and that this one's eight and a half so uh, what I find is that I've never overdriven these speakers physically and, uh, uh, they have the frequency response and the one we're interested in here is the blue line if we look at here what we'll see that here's one kilohertz and now we're uh, we're at two kilohertz uh, 3 kilohertz and it's dropping off around 4 kilohertz so we'll find out that it has a, a lot of top end on it uh, if you weren't happy with the top end you can always add a horn to the design if you want but I find that uh, with the amp I use I d if I need a little bit more high end I just turn up the uh, treble control or I have a, um, a brightness switch on it I also have an equalizer on my amp so you know you can modify the speaker to w what you like now, the program that I use is called uh, WinX, WinISD. So I'll just uh, open up that, um, make it full screen here. This is a free program, uh, which is pretty cool. And it's for designing speaker cabinets. Right? So I'll just open up uh, my peerless one here. And uh, very first thing that when you're building a, a cabinet what you do is you have to put in your uh, speaker configuration here um, and this is where you put in the, what's called the teal uh, small parameters so you put in information peerless what the model is uh, it says data provided by this but I, I actually put it in so uh, if you look at the color code green is entered and if you if you're missing any of the values this program will automatically calculate it and if they're not available so anything in green I added, and this is right from the spec sheet, like the frequency of resonance and etc. I don't know why it's 34.4, and that. And then you have advanced parameters, right? So let's uh, put the right one in here, 36.5. Right. And we'll save. So we've got it loaded in here and then we can go to the box and this is pretty cool is that you can actually set up with your box size now the box size I'm using is 2800 uh, cubic inch I'm using all imperial systems because that's what I'm most familiar with right and what you can do is you can change the resonance frequency I set it for 42 I believe it and what this does is it affects the vents so when you create vents you say the number of vents I'm going to have two I can determine what the shape of a round or square a round or rectangle right uh, my vent size was 2.8 and what you see is that the vent length is nine and a half inches so now that means I have a, a cardboard tube that the inner diameter is 2.8 inches and uh, uh, it's going to be nine and a half inches long uh, what I did is I went to a uh, carpet store and carpet store the carpet comes on uh, cardboard thick cardboard rolls and what they'll do is they'll give you these tubes for free because they get tons of them with their cardboard they don't want them so I went there and I got like an eight foot section that was uh, two two point eight inch diameter right so now one of the things you might have noticed is now we have our frequency response has changed right um, so we can see that uh, here's 30 hertz is, is down about minus 8 dB and 40 hertz is right at 0 dB and then a little bit of a peak here right so 40 hertz is is basically uh, your E string and if you have a 5 string your bass is at uh, 31 hertz which is uh, your B string right so I'm a little bit down here so all I have to do is just give a little bit on my uh, low bass end or my EQ to, to boost this up and that uh, now, something really interesting is if you don't want to follow the plans, I have all the blueprints for the box I built that's coming up, is that you can actually play with 
the you can drag the mouse around this box configuration to change the uh, um, the tuning and characteristics. So if you go up and down, I believe it changes the frequency. So I'll just try to go up. Yeah, you can see the frequency change, and this is a resonant. And then you can go left to right will change the box size. So you can actually really simple change your uh, frequency response of your thing. You'll see the box size gets big really quick, right? Um, at the same time when you do this, it will change the vent size, right? So now we need a vent of uh, 21.53, uh, right? So one of the things you can do is you can change the shape of it and then you can uh, play around the sizes and that. I, this would have been really nice if they had the, uh, the vents and the box on the same page so that way you can see how it changes the vents and you can fine tune it that way. Uh, whenever you have a vent what you need is to have a space uh, inside the box um, for it to move so my box is uh, about 14 inches deep I believe it is, yeah 14 inches deep and I have a nine and a half inch tube sticking in it so the difference between 14 inch and nine and a half is how much free airspace there is inside the box behind the tube. So we're talking about this area right here. All right, so uh, what we'll do is we'll take a look at the, uh, the drawings. I'll talk about how the box was made. Now this is the first blueprint. I call it the base cab 2x8 complete. And uh, what it has is it shows you all, um, well, four views of it. Uh, so what we have is the side view is here. This is this whole section. This is the front baffle. This is the uh, top and bottom. And this is the assembly on it. Right? Um, the front view shows the cutouts for the ports and the cutouts for the uh, speakers. Right? Now, if I come over here and I take a look at the, uh, the way the cabinet is, is uh, put together is that you have your front baffle and then you have your sides and then you have your top. So I, I've got this laying down on its side just so that it's easier to draw or whatever. I don't. Uh, the overall length is 21 and a half inches this way. Uh, so if we take a look at the uh, what I call the base cab 2x8 front baffle, um, this shows the details. right? So I have a, a cutout here for uh, anything in red is what I've cut out and then anything in black is so like this black here is the outline of the speaker and then uh, this is front loaded, so the speakers can be loaded from outside the box. Uh, then, in red is the cutout size here. So the cutout, the, it's eight inch speaker, but the actual cutout size is seven and three eighths. And for some reason, this shows a seven point three seven four. It should be seven point three seven five, but that's and that. And then the the, the, the centering of the holes and that. Uh, this distance from here to here is twenty inches. And this one here is 10 inches. Uh, this is the front baffle. Ends up the uh, the rear panel is the same thing, but it doesn't have the cutouts on here. Uh, one of the things you'll see on the side is three quarter inch uh, MDF. Uh, MDF is because uh, I'm using MDF because it's very solid wood. It's uh, super thick, super dense. Uh, com it's denser than plywood, so anything you have to do with base, you want really dense wood, and that. Um, what I did is I assembled it using uh, dowels, quarter inch dowels, and glue. So basically I have my dowels in here and that would made up with uh, uh, the bottom. In this case it would be the bottom or the top. And then it was all glued and clamped and that. So I didn't use any uh, nails and that. I wanted to show you how the uh, uh, dowels went together on this. So basically what happens is um, this is the way it's assembled. So you have your front baffle. Then you have a side here, and a side here, and this is the t bottom and the top. Now, if I look at the top, I've got holes here. These are all holes for dowels. I put wooden dowels in because my plan was to take my router and route, route off the edge. And if I use screws, then my router would hit metal. It wouldn't work well. So, so I can put dowels, glue it together, and then when I use my router, um, it'll just route right through the dowels. You won't even see it, right? So. Um, this is the the top, the top or bottom is going to sit like here and I'm going to have dowels from here that are going to go in here. So on the baffle I basically laid this on top and then dr drilled my dowels through it and then put my dowels in afterwards. 
you saw I drilled these holes, used them as a template on here. And this is inset on the front, right? So it's going to inset the uh, front baffle one inch in, and the dimensions here will indicate it. And on the rear panel, it was flush, so this was at a 3 8 inch, 3 quarter inch divided by 2 is 3 8 inch, so 3 8 inch holes and dowels here. Now for the sides, uh, as you'll see, the uh, the top and the the bottom cover completely. So um, what you'll have is these are the um, dowels for the the side here, right? So we we'd do the same thing. We'd have our um, comparable ones here. Now on the front baffle, we also have dowels this way. So here's my dowels here, and they come down here. Um, one of the things that happens on the side, it doesn't show the dowels here because the holes are drilled this way. So basically I drilled the, the top or bottom, laid it on the side here, it would fit here, and then I have my template for drilling my holes. So basically what I did is I put together the uh, front and the sides, and then once those were all glued together, then I put the, uh, the top and the bottom on. This is the base cap side, and uh, again, it shows you the dimensions, and it has two holes here. What I did is I um, used a wooden dowel. In this case, uh, I actually used a, a broom handle, a wooden broom handle, and cut it up, and the idea was to stiffen this area. So I, I had from uh, the left side going to the right side, I had an internal dowel here that uh, uh, would stiffen the side so the sides don't flex, and I had two of them. Uh, this would just clear the speakers. I had little um, guidelines that would say what the speakers were, and that allowed me to put two dowels here and really uh, thicken this up. I made one. Uh, it's interesting with base cabs how much they'll flex with base. I made uh, one cab. Yeah, I made one speaker that was a folded horn enclosure, and uh, it had quite a long path to go through. And uh, what would actually happen is the cabinet would flex. You could physically see the cabinet flexing, so I had to reinforce it on the outside. And that, that was just a, um, a prototype speaker I made. So uh, once you get into base, you really have to try and make things as uh, solid as possible. So in this case, I used the broom handles, cut them up, and then uh, screwed them from either side to make that cabinet as uh, um, solid as possible. So this is the uh, uh, top on it. So I, I have the uh, front baffle um, inset about one inch. That way I could put my speakers mounted on here. And then I could put a grill on it and that. And so um, the dowels are one and three eighths inch in. So that way it's centered inside the, uh, centered inside the front baffle. And then the rear panel is flush here. I also have the cut list, and all of this is provided on my uh, Google Drive, so if you want to download it and build it, this one. It all fits on a 4x4 four four, uh, uh, MDF, 3 quarter inch thick uh, sheet, right? Um, so you got lots of room here. You can actually make a bigger one, lower frequency if you want better response, and there's lots of wood. So it's not expensive to make at all. Um, I covered it with Tolex, and I got the corners from uh, Next Gen, and uh, put put some little rubber feet on the bottom and uh, wired it up and it was pretty easy to do. And, uh, 